This video is part of a series offering a short introduction to Anglo-Saxon England. This first part will present before and early Anglo-Saxon England. The second will cover the later Anglo-Saxon period. The third will discuss lifestyle, and the fourth, religion and government. England's habitation doesn't begin with Anglo-Saxon England. The British Isles may have had inhabitants as much as 40,000 years ago. During harsher periods in the Ice Age, they left. Some may have returned in milder times before leaving again. About 11,000 years ago, a group of people settled permanently. Studying DNA has enabled scientists to reconstruct the appearance of one called Cheddar Man, shown here. Then, very roughly 9,000 years later, about 2,500 before Common Era or before Christ, a culture known as Beaker culture also settled in the British Isles. They were followed some hundreds of years later by Celts. Each of these cultures intermarried and adapted with and to those already there to a greater or lesser extent. Then, in 43 Common Era, or AD, Rome conquered Britain, settled troops, and built roads, buildings, and whole towns in Britain. Again, they intermarried, and much cultural mixing occurred. Roman religions, including Christianity, were adopted by some peoples living in Britain. When I say Roman, keep in mind that the Roman Empire at this time was so big that Romans included both Western and Eastern Europeans, Middle Easterners, and Africans. Bodies in late Roman cemeteries in Britain have been identified as coming from Africa and possibly even China. The Anglo-Saxon period begins a little nebulously, around the 5th century CE, that is, Common Era, equivalent to AD. In the 5th century, the last Roman troops left Britain, and a plea from Britons for more troops went unanswered. Around this time, some Germanic tribes people migrated from the continent to what we now call England. Here is a reconstruction of where Germanic people might have originated and settled. I'd like to give full credit, but Wikipedia just says, my work, without a name. As you can see, Settlers came from different parts of the continent, did not all speak exactly the same language, and settled in various parts of what is now England. They were also not Christian, although we know relatively little about their beliefs. Older sources may tell you, following the Venerable Bede, about whom more later, that the Germanic people who came were warriors hired as mercenaries to protect the Celts in what is now England from other Celts from outside. That may be at least partly true. Yet Bede also paints a picture of mercenaries overwhelming and conquering the Celts, slaughtering them and pushing them out. Much recent research does not fully support this story. Instead, evidence from grave goods, DNA, and other sources make it seem likely that a small number of Germanic immigrants, mostly men, intermarried with the women already there. That is to say, Celts, some of them Romanized, some of them mixed with other people who had come at various times. So about 500 Common Era, we start to talk of the beginnings of Old English as different Germanic languages or dialects from the continent developed into a new language in England. Celtic appears to have had relatively a little effect on Old English outside of place names. We're not exactly sure why or exactly how much effect it did have. So much of what we call the Anglo-Saxons had a mix of Germanic and Celtic heritage and Roman, possibly immigrants from Africa, perhaps Asia, and pre-Celtic inhabitants of England. The English did not develop a unified kingdom at once, but had several kingdoms, and there were tribes living between some kingdoms. Bede describes seven major kingdoms, Northumbria, which includes Bernicia and Deira, Mercia, East Anglia, Essex, Kent, Sussex, and Wessex. Different kingdoms had different degrees of power and different kings and subkings at various times. Now, as I mentioned, these Germanic newcomers were not Christian, though some of the Celts were. 
around 597, Pope Gregory the Great sent two missionaries, Augustine, later known as Augustine of Canterbury, and Theodore of Tarsus, to convert the Anglo-Saxons to Christianity. Augustine seems to have been a Roman, and Theodore came from a Greek-speaking area in what is now Turkey. Letters show they wanted to turn back even before they reached Britain, based on rumors of Anglo-Saxon atrocities. Yet they came, and they brought not only Christianity to the Anglo-Saxons, but a much wider culture of book learning. Augustine also had some help in Celts who were already Christians, although Bede mentions them very little except for queens. By the time of Bede himself, England had largely been Christianized. Bede was a monk and priest at a famous Benedictine monastery we know as Monk Wormuth Jarrow, and in 731 he finished writing his Ecclesiastical History of the English People, which drew on both documents and the memories of living people to construct a still valuable history of the conversion of the Anglo-Saxons to Christianity. I'm brushing over huge parts of a complex story here, but I hope you now have a better grounding in the origins of Anglo-Saxon England and where, when, and who we're discussing. I'm grateful to all of those who have shared their work with Creative Commons or new licenses. I'm sharing the credits here so that you can go and see the originals if you want. If you have time and interest, I highly recommend a few other readings, including Bede's Ecclesiastical History, of which more than one good translation is available, The Anglo-Saxons by Campbell, John, and Mormald, and Robin Fleming's Britain After Rome. Thank you for listening.